Welcome to Mary in Ghana, where kente cloths is what we do, where African weddings and events are our specialty, where African tradition wears perfected, where beautiful culture resides, where marrying is honorable. MGKente.com where competitors can't compete in quality or prices. Shop now, mgkente.com. What's up? It's your favorite lawyer, and today, African Diaspora, we are going to discuss voting in two different states. We're first, first, we're going to discuss Texas. That is the state that I hail from. And we're also going to discuss Florida. Um, drop your states in the comments below. Um, I'm going to troll through those comments. And what I'll do is I'll go over your states, okay? The people that have the, the most amount. I'll try to get through all those states, okay? We'll get through those um, every week. Okay, every couple days we'll hit a different state and I'm going to take you over voting. And the reason I want to bring up voting, guys, is because uh, we already know that um, the great GOP is, you know, attempting to change the ways that we vote in order to, in my opinion, restrict voter participation, in my opinion, uh, for us uh, browns and blacks. So we got to go around that. We got to make sure that we educate ourselves right. And we got to make sure that we are ready to do what we have to do to ensure that our vote still counts. Alrighty, so let's go through and let's look at Texas, okay? And there are a lot of things about voting also, guys, that people don't know um, with respect to identification. You know, you get to the, the voting poll, you don't have what you need, and they won't let you vote. We don't want that to happen, okay? Especially this time, um, a year, this day and age, these elections that are coming up. Um, it's it's also important that our vote counts. Okay, so uh, voting in person in Texas. Okay, there are different types. I, I believe it's like seven types of um, acceptable forms of uh, photo ID uh, that the polls will take for for you to vote. Okay, so let's start up. Start. Sorry. Oh my God, y'all! I cannot talk today. Let's start with the Texas driver's license being number one. Your Texas election ID certificate, number two. Texas personal ID card, that's just that ID card that the state of Texas gives you, your personal ID. That will work as well. Some people have that as opposed to a driver's license, and some people have that and a driver's license. That'll work as well. Your handgun, your handgun license, that's another one. Uh, your U.S. citizenship certificate with photo, okay, um, that will work. Um, your U.S. military ID card with photo, that will work or a passport that will work y'all don't go up there with your offender cards your, your school id all these other things that you believe are government documents that you use to enter government buildings or you use for different types of discounts or you believe are, are spot on and good ways of identi identifying yourself and trying to vote with them they are not legally the proper ways to vote okay so i just gave you the seven acceptable forms of id guess what a lot of the times people do not go to the voting polls because they believe because their id is expired they cannot vote that is not true guys if you are between the ages of 18 and 70 and your i your id or your whatever acceptable form id you have whether it be your passport your driver's license your id card your election certificate whatever it is has expired four years or less you could still use it to vote okay so they give you four years with an expired uh id to vote y'all so don't feel like you can't vote just because it's expired you can now if you're over the age of 70 that sucker can be expired for however long and you can still use it because they can't force someone 70 or older to renew these things uh you have issues getting where you need to get issues uh with possibly possibly being handicapped um, and so they don't bother you. Okay, so 70 and up, it can be expired for any amount of time. 18 to 69, as long as it's four years or less. Okay? Got it? 
All right. Now, there are some people, and I have run into this, and people don't believe this, but it's true. There are people out there that cannot get any of these things for whatever reason. They've lost their social security card, or they don't have the social the birth certificate or the birth certificate, or they have the social security card and not, and not the birth certificate, and you need both to get certain things, whatever. There are alternatives that you can use, guys. There are alternatives. Now, don't count on the polling place to tell you this. This is something that you better know. So don't call, count on the, col the polling places to be able to let you know everything. You kind of got to know yourself because sometimes they don't even know that they're able to do this. But once you request it, the, um, the poll judge is going to know everything, okay? So you may have to get the polling associate to go get the polling judge. Um, but basically, what you're going to do is that you're going to request something called a reasonable impediment declaration, okay? And that reasonable impediment declaration says that there's a reasonable impediment to obtaining an acceptable form of photo identification. It states that the information contained in the declaration is true, uh, that you are the same individual personally appearing at the polling place to sign this declaration, and that you face an, a reasonable impediment to procuring an acceptable form of photo identification. Okay, you're going to execute this, and then they're going to let you vote. A lot of the times people don't know this, but you're going to execute this and then they're going to let you vote, okay? We're going to move on to Florida. In Florida, the ID that you need to vote is either your Florida driver's license, Florida identification card that's issued by a Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles office, your United States passport, just like Texas. They will even take a debit or a credit card, okay? They will take a military identification, a student identification, a retirement center ID, a neighborhood association ID, a public assistance ID. They will accept that, y'all. Uh, a veteran health ID, as long as it's issued by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, a concealed handgun uh, permit, okay, or an employee ID card that's issued by any branch, department, or agency, or entity of the federal government, the state government, a county government within Florida, or a municipal government. So Florida has very, very lax um restrictions on what you need to vote okay however um you know they don't have as many of their rules that are posted okay and the local elections offices deals with the rules in florida but i would assume that's because they don't have very many restrictions okay now you should make sure that your photo id has your signature if it does not have a signature Here's where things are different there. Because sometimes people issue you IDs that don't have a signature on them or don't have a place for a signature. They'll ask you to provide an alternate form of identification that does have a signature. So you'll have to have an alternate form of identification that has a signature to go along with that other ID that you can use for voting that does not have a signature. Okay? If you don't have a valid ID in Florida, you can still lodge and input a provisional ballot. They will still allow you to vote. What they do is go back through, look at that provisional ballot, and make sure that it that your signature there matches the signature on your registration record. So as long as you're registered to vote, they're going to let you vote. They're going to let you vote in Florida, even without an ID, okay? Uh, even without a valid ID. But what's going to happen is when you sign, it's got to be the way that you sign when you register to vote, okay? So just wanted to put that out there. Uh, guys, post your states underneath. Okay, and then I will move through if we got to go through all 51 states and back around again with exactly what you're going to need to vote. Okay, any questions that you have with respect to voting, lodge it underneath the comments. Okay, make sure that you like this. Okay, we want to get the algorithms of moving and going. Make sure you send me an email if you have any questions, booker at bookerlawfirm.com. I love to get your emails, and I actually have my own page on YouTube. It's legal. Uh, the letter Q, the letter T, so it's Legal Cutie. Go ahead and like and subscribe there as well. And when you email me, guess what? Your uh, questions that you ask can either wind up on this African Diaspora channel or on my own. So make sure you email me. Again, I love to take emails and add me on Instagram, she underscore ya underscore lawyer. And I'm also on Facebook underneath my name, Allie Booker. You guys have a fantastic day. And until next time, Stay up.
In search of a financial opportunity to pay off student loans, a young black American woman moves to South Korea to work. As the author, Bootsy W. recalls culture shock and fun adventures in a country far from home. She's also faced with anti-black racism and featureism, quickly learning that white supremacy is practiced not only by whites, but by those that are categorized as people of color. Based on her 10 years of living abroad, the book, Ego Igo, compares and contrasts Korea versus the United States on subjects such as code, communal living, racism, effective protests, global alliances, warrior class, music, political correctness, health, aging, money, and the coronavirus. This blunt memoir is uncomfortable, humorous, and educational. Help fight propaganda and mainstream agendas by picking up a copy of Ego I Go on Amazon.com. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and download the African Diaspora News Channel app, now available on Google Play and the Apple App Store.